The Insurrectionist by Jules Valls. Disclaimer, I don't actually know how to pronounce it. Uh, Jules Vallée, uh, Jules Vallée. It's a French name. Uh, this is going to be a source of embarrassment for me throughout this video and through a number of my videos. I'm very interested in French history. I never learned any French, so I, I'm gonna mispronounce everyone's names, I'm sorry. Anyways, about this book, um, right. This, this is an interesting book. Uh, the guy who wrote it, uh, whose name I'm just going to mispronounce as Jules Vallée, uh, J-U-L-E-S-V-A-L-L-E-S, -E -E um, was on the Paris Commune. Now, what is the Paris Commune? I, I should probably back up and explain this first. Paris Commune was a short-lived revolution in Paris in 1871. The exact ideological nature of the Paris Commune has always been a source of debate, but kind of in the popular mythology, it's uh, associated with uh, Karl Marx, the communist, uh, and also with Mikhail Bakunin, the uh, leading anarchist at the time. So it, it's something that both kind of the communists and anarchists claim, um, even though, uh, if you look kind of closely at the history of it, the exact ideological nature of it was a lot more kind of mixed up and muddled, and the majority of the people in it seemed to have been Jacobins rather than socialists, blah, 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 but it, it was, it was, a, it was, a, it was a revolution in 1871 uh, where the radicals took control of Paris and held it for two months until they were crushed by the French army. Uh, and Karl Marx wrote a lot on it, Mikhail Bakunin wrote on it, uh, Lenin wrote on it. it, it is associated with communist and anarchist uh, ideology to this day. Jules Valls, uh, the name I'm mispronouncing, was part of the Paris Commune. And when I say part of, uh, I don't just mean he was on the barricades, although he was on the barricades, but he was actually a member of the Paris Commune government. So the, the radicals had control of Paris for about two months and they held their own elections and elected their representatives. He was elected part of that government and uh, I think he was the Minister of Education or something like that. Uh, even, even before the Paris Commune, he had kind of established himself as kind of one of the leading radicals in kind of the 1860s, 1850s, 1860s. Then after the Paris Commune, he fled to England, where he published a trilogy of books, which is kind of his autobiography. Although it's a little bit strange because he never used his own name in it. He uses... Uh, a Roman a clef, like a, like a, is that how you say it, Roman a clef? He, the, the, he uses a different name throughout the, the books, which I, is another name I'm going to mispronounce because I can't speak French. Jacques Vingtras. Uh, sorry. Uh, and he published three books, uh, The Child, which is about his child years. Uh, the Bachelor, or sometimes The Student, uh, I think is a, I, I'm not sure how it's translated. Uh, which covers kind of his uh, revolutionary student days, kind of up through his kind of young adulthood. And then The Insurrectionist. Uh, the Insurrectionist kind of uh, goes from the 1860s through the Paris Commune and kind of ends with the fall of the Paris Commune. Historians have debated uh, how much of this is memoir and how much of this is uh, fiction because he, he kind of... He, again, he was using a different name, and he kind of presented it as fiction. Um, but a lot of this seems to be memoir, and I'll get into this a little bit later. Kind of, uh, he left, he changed his own name, but he left everybody else's names the same. So all the other historical figures he was interacting with during the 1860s or during the Paris Commune, their names are all kind of left exactly. Uh, and if you compare this to his biography, I mean, I'm no expert, but just based on what is on Wikipedia, it seems to kind of line up. So I'm going to treat this mostly as a memoir, but I, I'm, I'm no expert. So if anyone knows better, uh, let me know in the comments. 
Right. Uh, now, this is a bit of an obscure book that's a bit hard to get a hold of, especially in the English translation, which is what I read because I don't speak French. Um, I'm told that even in the French, uh, Jules Valls has been one of those authors who's kind of gone in and out of fashion, and for long periods of time, has people have kind of forgotten about him, and he's been out of fashion. Uh, the last time he kind of came back in a big way, I think, was in the 1968 uh, student protests in Paris, where all of a sudden his name started appearing all, uh, a lot and people took a renewed interest in his books. <clears throat> now, the, the version I was able to track down, The Insurrectionist, uh, I forget exactly the publication date, but it was something like 1970, 1971, or something like that. So shortly after the 1968 uh, student protests in Paris. And I, I imagine influenced by that revival and interest to him. Uh, I have spent a lot of time searching this on the internet, and as best I can find out, the middle book, with, you know, the book about kind of his student days and kind of shortly after his student days, has never been translated into English. Uh, so you just have... But the first book, The Child, not only was translated into English, but kind of got like a, a reissue and a reprint not all that long ago. 2005, which to me seems not all that long ago. I think it was Random House Penguin Books or something like that. And they, they had out a, a new edition with like a new introduction. And the introduction is like, this is such a genius book. Uh, what, what a classic, uh, uh, what a great book. Uh, yeah, but you know these publishers introductions. Uh, I'm gonna review that one shortly. I'm doing this a little bit, little bit out of order. That review is coming soon. I read that and I thought, huh, okay. So they're, they're reissuing these then, huh? And next is going to come out the, the book about his student days, and the next is going to come out The Insurrectionist. But they never followed through on that. I don't know, maybe sales weren't as great as they expected, or I don't know, maybe, maybe, the, maybe that was the plan all along, that they thought The Child was kind of a really valuable work of literature, and the other two books were forgettable. So that, the, the, the Child got reissued in 2005 uh, in English translation. The Bachelor, uh, the middle book, has, to the, as far as I can figure out, never been issued in English. And The Insurrectionist, as far as I can figure out, was last printed in English sometime in the early 70s. <clears throat> Fortunately, in this day and age, with Amazon and the internet and stuff like that, it has never been easier to track down books. So I decided I was interested in this book. You go on Amazon, and sure enough, some you know somebody's selling an old copy of The Insurrectionist, and I ordered it through the mail, and it arrived, and and uh, yeah, and I imagine you could find a copy easily enough if you're interested as well. Uh, I recommend it for what it's worth. Okay. So uh, right. <clears throat> Talking about this, sorry, I'm, I'm going through my notes here. Uh, the Insurrectionists. So the Insurrectionists begins with Jules Valls in 1857. Now, at this point in the story, he's gone against his morals and he's accepted a job as a teacher uh, because he's just been kind of poor and living on the streets for several years. Uh, teacher, of course, is like uh, something he doesn't want to do because being a teacher is being an authority figure, it's being part of the establishment. But a man's got to eat, and he's been just hungry and out on the streets for too long. His former friends criticize his cowardice and hypocrisy, but after years of starving himself, Jules Valls is unable... Jules, I say Jules Valls, actually the... Character name is Jacques, Jacques Vingtress throughout the, throughout the book. He uses a different name. Anyways, after years of starving himself, he is unable to resist the lure of steady meals and a paycheck. However, his newfound security is not to last long. Valais loses his jobs after telling the students never to pay attention to anything they are taught in school. He then briefly becomes a government clerk and loses that job after giving a seditious speech at one of the clubs. 
Uh, again, this is one of those things that lines up perfectly with his biography on Wikipedia. He actually did do this. Uh, he struggles to find work in journalism. He participates in several anti-government demonstrations, but he and his colleagues are never able to mount a serious challenge to the Second Napoleonic Empire. Uh, Jules Valls was recruited by his socialist friends to run against the moderate Republican Jules Simon in the governmental election. Now, at this point in history, uh, Napoleon II is kind of the ruler of France, and he's, yeah, he's, uh, he's an interesting guy. He was kind of like a liberal empire, emperor in one sense, but kind of everybody in the left hated him, uh, including not only the socialists and the anarchists and stuff like that, but also the Republicans, right? Kind of the re Republicans with a small r, uh, the, the moderate Republicans who believe in a Republican form of government. So Jules Simon is running uh, in the elections. No, uh, near kind of the end of his reign, uh, Napoleon kind of allowed some elections during the, the empire. So they're, they're running for a government seat. Uh, and Jules Simon is heading the Republican opposition to Napoleon. But some of the socialists thought it was important to uh, have a socialist alternative in the election. So uh, Jules Valls gets recruited to run against Jules Simon uh, for this seat. But other people are worried that if you have too many people on the left running for the same seat, it's going to split the vote and it's just going to either put one of Napoleon's guys in or it's going to look like kind of uh, Napoleon's guys have, have kind of all the votes and the, the left is not getting any of the votes because they, they split the vote. Um, and again, according to Wikipedia, this is something Jules Valls actually did. He did actually run it, uh, against Jules Simon as kind of a socialist alternative during this election. Um, but, you know, this is one of those many things where I read it through this book and I thought, yeah, this is still an issue we struggle with today. I mean, I, I remember when I read this book, uh, fresh in my mind, with the 2000 election, in which I voted for Ralph Nader, uh, and I was in a safe state anyway, so it didn't matter in my case, but because uh, of a lot of us voting for Ralph Nader generally, uh, George Bush won that election, right? So this is always kind of an issue that's still around here for radicals today. Do you just kind of plug your nose and vote for the centrist uh, Democrat or the, the centrist, uh, or do you vote for the socialist alternative or the, you know, whatever leftist alternative is up, up there? Uh, then the Franco-Prussian War begins. Now the Franco-Prussian War was, uh, this was kind of the start of the chain of events that would eventually lead to the Paris Commune. Uh, because the Paris Commune came, kind of came out of the defeat of the Franco-Prussian War. But at the beginning of the Franco-Prussian War, uh, everybody was really gung-ho and pro-war, including kind of the working classes who traditionally had been kind of the basis of like the socialist movement or, you know, the radical movement had kind of come from these working classes. But all these working classes got kind of swept up in the patriotism and the, and the war fervor and were kind of cheer, cheering the war. Uh, Jules Valls was uh, active in the peace demonstrations. And again, according to Wikipedia, he actually was jailed for uh, participating in these peace demonstrations. Um, but what, what the sense you get from his book is that these peace demonstrations were like so small. It was just like a handful of them campaigning for peace against all this uh, big kind of cheering for the war. And he gets beat up uh, at this peace demonstration. And what really gets to him, because he's been beat up by the police before, what really gets to him is he gets beat up not by the police, but by the workers. Uh, you know, the very people he felt like he spent his whole life trying to help. And he writes this in this, this his book, the feeling of real discouragement he has kind of uh, when the workers turn against him. He says, I regret my sacrificed youth, the life I have given to starvation, the pride I have given to the dogs, the future I have spoiled 
for a mob I thought had a soul, a mob I wanted to honor by giving it all the strength I had so painfully amassed. And now I see that very same mob sucking up to soldiers, dogging the steps of the regiments, cheering colonels whose epaulets are still sticky with the blood of December. Uh, this is referring to, uh, I think, uh, when they had shot workers in December. Shouting, kill them! When we say we want to silence the trumpets by ramming rags down their bells, it is the greatest disillusionment of my life. Uh, and again, I think this is something that's still true nowadays, right? Where kind of uh, we on the left will, uh, we, I guess we haven't had a war now in a while, uh, but quite often at the beginning of the war, there'd be this kind of outburst of patriotism which is uh, really disturbing towards uh, people on the left who are campaigning for kind of anti-war sentiments uh, or, yeah, for, for kind of a more international outlook. Um, yeah, and quite often throughout history, uh, the working classes have supported this patriotism. So this is, this is a frustration that has come up again and again throughout historical events. Now, uh, the Franco-Prussian War ends in defeat, uh, disaster, and then the Paris Commune uh, eventually comes up. Now, um, <clears throat> Jules Valls, uh, the, the Paris Commune, uh, the government of the Paris Commune was split into two factions. There was a majority of the, uh, the majority faction, which was uh, Jacobin in nature. And then there was a minority uh, which was, uh, is, has been characterized as Proudhonist, which is another French name I'm probably mispronouncing, but uh, Proudhon uh, was like a socialist anarchist who was uh, popular in France in the 1840s. Uh, what had happened to him by 1870s? Was he dead by that time? I don't remember, actually. Uh, but yeah, uh, kind of a, a socialist proto-anarchist was, was Proudhon. Uh, so Valls, Jules Valls was on the minority faction with these guys, and he, uh, he was against the Jacobin majority in the Paris Commune. But what's interesting about his memoir is we don't get any insight into these ideological battles uh, between the majority and the minority, even though the historical Jules Valls was involved in that. Instead, what we get is like character portraits, like he talks about what so-and-so was like, and again, kind of real historical figures who uh, were actually famous during the Paris Commune. So we get kind of character portraits of people. Uh, I've read somewhere that Marxists will say that Jules Valve uh, was an adventurous, not a serious politician, because he does seem to be kind of more interested in personality and I than in ideology. Um, and also, during the insurrection, he does seem to be more interested in chronicling the experiences of what it was like to kind of live through this revolution, rather than the ideology behind it. And he paints a number of vivid portraits of like certain experiences he had during it. Uh, for example, uh, the insurrectionist repeatedly deals with the intersection of the political and the personal. Probably the most striking example of which is the following scene from the fall of the commune in which Valais, Jules Valais is witnessed an accused spy about to be executed. <clears throat> so, quoting from the book, another one denied being a traitor and asked to be led before the proper authorities. He spoke as a coupon clipper from Les Marais place. I've never been mixed up in politics. That's why I'm killing you, replied a fighter who had been hit in the left paw one hour before and when he's using his right paw to aim a revolver at the man in the grip of the crowd. And he was about to shoot when it was decided that people perhaps should not be executed without proof 
and that this man should be led to the public si should be led to public safety, the authorities he was begging for as often as his sobs would allow. All right, so the Paris Commune set up a committee of public safety, which was in. Uh, yeah, kind of an imitation of the original French Revolution. That was by the, the Jacobin faction in the Paris Commune. The committee will let him go. As sure as I've lost five fingers, grumbled the wounded man, shaking his red stump. Not mixed up in politics. They're the biggest cowards of all. I hate that kind of a son of a bitch. They wait until the slaughter to see who to spit on and who to suck up to. Now, Valais himself, uh, Jules Valls himself, as I said before, uh, was uh, in the Proudhonist section, which is kind of an anarchist section, maybe. Uh, and he was cons they were consistently outvoted by the Jacobin majority on the Paris Commune. Um, but interestingly enough, in the book, Jules Valls kind of describes this, again, not in terms of political ideology, but he describes it in terms of personality, and again, quoting from the book again. And apologies for mispronouncing all these French names. I hate Robespierre the deist, and I don't think we should ape Marat, the galley slave of suspicion, the lunatic of terror, the maniac of the bloody age. My curses join with the majority when they attack the reactionists. But more sacrilegious than they, I also spit on Robespierre's vest. Now, in the book, almost no time is given to the commune's deliberation. Uh, but Jules Valls gives a lot of space to the fall of the commune and Bloody Week. Uh, most of the commune members were killed uh, when the French army came back into Paris. And Valais, Jules Valls himself, barely escapes uh, by disguising himself as an ambulance driver. Both the massacres of civilians by the Versailles army and the shooting of hostages by the commune horrifies Jules Valls. And he makes a vain attempt to save some of the hostages. All oh, right, so uh, yeah, the, the Jacobin majority in the Paris Commune did take hostages, and uh, yeah, some of the some of the more extreme Jacobins did execute some of the hostages during the fall of the Paris Commune. Uh, Jules Valves actually tried to save the hostages, uh, as he records in his book, but he was not successful. If there is a consistent ideological thread to Jules Valves' work. It is a horror of cruelty and killing. And yet, he is not without his mixed feelings about the necessity of violence in a revolution, as revealed by this exchange following the execution of a spy. Uh, and again, quoting from the book. A man came up to me. Citizen, do you want to see what a traitor's corpse looks like? Someone's been executed? Yeah, a baker. He denied it at first, then he admitted it. The Federal saw me turn pale. Maybe you would have voted for acquittal. Jesus, God, can't you see that to smash in one Judas's head saves the heads of a thousand of our own men? Blood horrifies, horrifies me, and my hands are covered with it. He grabbed me, and I held on when I shot him. But where would you be if you couldn't find anybody to kill spies? Uh, so this, this was a citizen yelling at, at him, at Jules Valls, or Jacques Fintrace in the book. Somewhat in, someone intervened in the debate. That's not all. You want to keep your paws clean for the time when you stand before the court or posterity. And we're the ones, the poor, the workers, the ones who always have to do the dirty work. So everyone can spit on us later, right? That angry man was speaking the truth. Yes, you want to stay clean for history and not have the slaughterhouse filth attached to your name. Uh, this is the narrator talking to himself in this section. Admit that to yourself, Vingtras, and don't consider it a virtue that your face, your face turned white before the dead baker. 
Uh, one final note for historical interest. Uh, the insurrectionist is filled with first-hand descriptions of other famous French radicals from this period. I'm going to mangle the names here, but um, people like Blanqui, Rigault, Varlin. Uh, Var Varlin, I think, was the one member who was a uh, member of Marx's International, and also on the Paris Commune. Vermoral, uh, Michelet. Uh, however, for those unfamiliar with French history, there can be a lot of strange names and references to keep track of, so be forewarned. I had an advantage going into this in that I had already read several history books on the Paris Commune. Excuse me. I can't pronounce any of the names, but I, I recognized who they were and I read them in print. Uh, if you don't have a big background in the Paris Commune, some of these names might be confusing for you. I'd still recommend the book in spite of that, but just be forewarned ahead of time.